Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm talking about how I made this hammer, a low poly game asset, using the hand painted tools in Blender. Do check out my website and the playlist on this channel for more great content. And make sure you check out my texture painting playlist with loads of great tips, which I'll be adding to in the next few weeks. So the first thing to do is block in the colors. You can isolate different parts of the mesh quite easily. You can learn about that in my texture painting playlist. And the first thing I do is sort of add a variation of color, especially to the stone and the metal. And then I use the smear brush to sort of smear that color around. And then I start adding the detail on top of that. That gives a bit of variation to the base colors from which to work upon. You can see now I'm filling in the detail for the handle. So getting the wood grain in there. Often it's a good idea to draw the sort of shaded parts first and then the highlights on top of that. It's kind of like sketching then and it's a bit sort of easier to manage and works well from a workflow point of view. I was having lots of problems with the smear brush. I do like to use the smear brush and sort of smear areas out if I'm trying to erase areas and things like that. But it was a bit glitchy at the moment. I don't know whether that's two, the current version of 2.9. I noticed it was even worse in 3.0 so I went back to 2.93. Here you can see I'm also playing with the saturation. You can actually fill in an uh, area with more or less saturation. It's quite a useful tool that. Those are the sort of blending brushes. And again, there's more detail on that in my texture painting playlist. Now here you can see me going around the highlights. So once I've added in a bit of shade, then I go around with the highlights. I sometimes use a light color or the screen brush for that. And you can see me using the screen and multiply brushes for light areas and dark areas. And then I'm adding some finer details, so some holes and dents in the rock. And I was going a little bit too dark in this, and then I decided to go over it a little bit with the screen brush to lighten them up a bit. And some of these scratches I think were a bit overboard. The whole painting section of this model took about 40 minutes, so not particularly long. I probably could have gone a bit more detailed into this, but I was just experimenting with a few techniques and trying a few things out. Just having a bit of fun basically. Now for the metal parts you see here, you tend to go for a really strong, bright, vivid highlight. And I use the color dodge blending mode for that, which works really nicely. And just to put in some dark patches. It's kind of like you're painting on a reflection. It looks a bit weird and it's quite tough to do really, metal, it's always a tough one, but it sort of works out in this case. It is funny, looking back at the model, there's a few things I'd like to change. I think the highlights are a bit too bright in places, but it's just about working and I think it would be okay and nice in a game. You can see now with the wood texture, I'm assuming the light is coming from the top, so a lot of these highlights are sort of as if the light is catching the edge of one of these dents or the edge of the grain. And I often put a highlight on either side, again, as if the light is just catching that. You need to paint in ambient occlusion as well, so you go into your dents and you give it a bit of shading, so use the multiply brush there is a really helpful tool. I was finding this really awkward as well, for some reason it didn't want to paint when I was getting too close. I do hope they look into those sort of things in Blender. I feel like the painting aspect is kind of getting neglected. It may be that it's just kind of going out of fashion. I'm not sure it's completely lost yet. But they do tend to be putting a lot more into things like the sculpting tools and other new and exciting features. So I do hope they take another look at the texture painting. So you can see I put a few scratches in. I usually put those in towards the end. They're the sort of fine details with the same technique using that sort of multiply brush and then the highlights or the color dodge for those highlights. So there we have it, a fun low poly hammer that's been texture painted. Let me know if you have any thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.